All right, so we're staying with football here on the Sportsmax Zone. The first the two fixtures of match week 23 in the rare nephew Jamaica Premier League took place on Monday, with both matches causing some movement close to the top of the table. Javed Bryan has a recap. Just four games remaining in the preliminary round in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League. Important points were up for grabs on Monday at the Anthony Spawning Sports Complex. First up, a top four clash. Pitting Cavalier, who came into the game on a rare three match winless run against Portmore United, who, although 15 games unbeaten, had drawn five of their last six games. When the teams met in December, only one goal could separate them. There was a similar theme in this affair, and with the chances few and far between, it was an Alex Marshall penalty that secured the win for Portmore. Their head coach, Philip Williams, was satisfied with the performance. Definitely so. Cavalier is a good team, and I mean, these are the teams that you have to beat um, in order to have a good assessment of your team. I think today was a good game. On the other hand, Cavalier technical director Rudolf Speed was left frustrated. Well, it's what it is. Um, we have to just make sure say, um, we're still in the top six. I mean, we have lost form um, badly. He didn't have betted by some atrocious calls, but I mean, it's the first I've ever seen a referee game and I get a card and take it back because the man was on one before. So these things happening against us, and we just have to take it in our strides. I suppose it comes to the territory. Um, it just happened too often for probably the last four games. Every game is the same thing, but we'll see what happens. Yep. The main event in the jungle was still to come. Championship hopefuls Arnett Gardens in front of their home support, taking on Humble Lion, who began the season as playoff hopefuls, but now are only seeking consolidation ahead of next season. But against the run of play and the hopes of the home crowd, Afiba Chambers stunned the jungle in the ninth minute to give Humble Lion the lead. The junglists did not drop their heads, however, and after pelting the Humble Lion goal, they finally got their reward. Shivani Willis headed into an open net to equalize. 1-1 one, one, the score at halftime, but in a devastating show of attacking progress, Arnett turned on the style in the second half with goal after goal. First, Jaheem Thomas notching his fifth of the season, following good work from Rashid Kelsey on the right. Then, Captain Fantastic, Fabian Packer Black's Reed decided to join the party. First, a cool left-footed finish to make it 3-1. Within a sublime curler into the top corner, which left humble line custodian Hassani Barnes with no chance. Oh, that was magical from Fabian Reed. Rolling back the years. What a finish. And then, speaking of no chance, Shivani Willis capped off his man of the match display with this. Willis! Willis! Oh, wow! Well, Shivani Willis! From a free kick from this range, I've said my, my, my before. But for this one, I just have to slow it down. Oh, me. Oh, my. What a hit, Shavani Willis. That's how it would end. A 5-1 victory, three points, and a job well done. Safe to say, Arnett Gardens head coach Xavier Gilbert was extremely pleased with his team's performance. Yeah, I mean, it was good. Um, I, I thought we played well. Um, disappointed that we can't see that goal, you know, again from another another set piece and we have to, to defend better uh, but nevertheless uh, we rose to the occasion again um, I think we dominated possession and created quite a number of opportunities in both halves of the game and a deserving win for the, for the, for the gentlemen tonight. Meanwhile Humble Line coach Linvan Wilson said this was all part of the process. I think we, we play well you know although we lost I think the game don't ref, the, the score don't reflect the game as you can see we have we, we were competing even we were we were down, but we were still competing, and that's, the, that's what we want. You know, I like a lot of the spirit. You know, we just need to fix a few things and make some decisions and, and, and we'll move on from there. After another enthralling edition of Monday Night Football, this is how these results have shaken up the table, with both Portmore United and Arnett Gardens joining Cavalier on 45 points, but surpassing them on goal difference. All right, so some really exciting matches yesterday, Lance, and I think it's only fitting that we start by talking about the Arnett Humble Lion one. Five goals for Arnett Gardens against Humble Lion. And of course, you know, um, Fabian Reed and Shivani Williams scoring twice for their team to ensure that they secured that victory and in fine style. Yeah, well, I think it was sort of vintage Arnett Gardens when you saw them scoring so many goals. They have uh, been a team that has been built on attractive, um, high-energy offensive football. So um, what we saw from Arnett Garns last night, 
I think represents the traditional Arnett Garden style that they score goals uh, readily and uh, they are hard to stop. They may concede goals from time to time, but they are a prolific goal scoring team. And uh, the Shivani Willis strike there, the free kick from outside the box was one of the best I've seen so far this season. Um, Willis had played previously for Boys Town and Portmore, had a stint in the USL Championship in the USA playing for Bethlehem and uh, Union Omaha. But he's back uh, playing domestically once again and um, I think those were the first two goals he has scored for the season. But I think, you know, these strikes, well, the header first and then that strike just represented how much quality he has. And he had displayed that from his school days at Jamaica College with his long-range shooting and so on. And I remember him scoring some long-range strikes from, for Boys Town as well. So um, this Arnett Gans roster looks pretty strong. Um, they have goal-scoring quality from all over the park. And um, I, I, I think, you know, the coach was understandably very thrilled with the performance of his team last night. I know Humberland may not be the best at the moment in, in quality and form, but if you score five goals on a night in the Jamaica Premier League, regardless of what the opposition is, you're going to make your coach happy. Yeah, and you know, after the win against Lime Hall Academy, I think it was last week, Xavier Gilbert was a bit disappointed because despite getting the win, of course, he said that he expected a bit more from the team moving forward. He singled out, especially in the attacking third. So based on what he saw them do this this match yesterday, of course, he would feel happy because it's as if, you know, you speak to your team, you give them instructions and you get that in the next week. So I think yeah. a lot for him to be happy about. Of course. And the fact is the jostling for the top two spots, because yeah. when you get to the top two spots in the regular season, you're guaranteed a semi-final spot. So you don't have to play the preliminary part of the playoffs. And right now there are three teams on 45 points. Um, Cavalier. Arnett Gardens and Portmore yes. joint second on 45 points. But because of goal difference, Portmore are second, Arnett are third, and Cavalier are in fourth spot. And of course, they are four points off the leaders, Mount Pleasant. So all of those three teams, uh, Portmore, Arnett, and Cavalier, can be eyeing a top two spot. And um, there's a lot to play for as far as that is concerned. But really, really um, satisfying performance by Arnett Gardens on the night. Troubling for Humbleland because they had changed their coaches uh, during the season. Uh, Linville Wilson now um, on the post-match interview suggesting that there were aspects about the, the performance that he felt were encouraging, even though they lost so badly. So we'll see what happens for them uh, toward the back end of the season. But the earlier match that saw Portmore defeating Cavalier by one goal to nil was also a good result for yeah. Portmore. Portmore have been the most successful team in the history of the Jamaica Premier League with, with seven titles. And uh, I think when you look at Cavalier's stuttering form at the moment, it emphasizing it emphasizes how much Cavalier have been the most consistent team in Premier League football for several years now because I was checking. This is the first time in over two years that Cavalier were losing back-to-back -back games because they don't lose back-to-back -back games generally. Right. And uh, this is the first time since 2019 that they have gone four games without a win. So while Portmore will be happy with the win here, I think the fact that it was only a 1-0 result and it was a via penalty. penalty as yeah. well. I know Coach Speed is disappointed that his team lost and you heard him referencing uh, that he didn't think that the referees have been kind to Cavalier in recent recent results. But I don't think Cavalier should be too despondent. Um, they, 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 have a, they have a stutter in their current form, but their consistency over time is, is well documented. And uh, there isn't any team in the top flight in Jamaica football at the moment that can boast the kind of consistency that Cavalier can boast. And as I said, th there's, there, there's no team apart from Cavalier that have, can boast the fact that they have not suffered back-to-back -back losses in so many seasons because I, the last time it happened was back in January 2022. Yeah. And I think the losses they had were against uh, Portmore and um, could have been Mount Pleasant, but they were two, two solid teams. And they didn't have any back-to-back -back losses in the 2021 season either, which was a shortened season played up at the Horace Boyle uh, Centre because it was the return from the COVID-19 pandemic or the return of football from the COVID-19 pandemic. So 
I, I, I understand Rudolf Speed's disappointment, but I think Cavalier's steadiness and their consistently um, strong performances would suggest to me that they will come out of this um, little um, stutter. Yeah. Uh, we won't soon. even say a slump. I'll, yeah. We'll yeah uh, by it. their standards, it's, like a, it's a slump. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> by their standards, it's a slump. Yeah. But, you know, losing two matches back to back and then four games without a win is unlike Cavalier. But this is football, so we'll yeah. see what happens. And but I don't think they're far off. Yeah, and that's contrasting to Portmore because they have stretched now their unbeaten streak to 16 matches. So, you know, you're talking about two teams that are having opposite fates at the point in time. Yeah, at Portmore has always been a solid organization. And um, they haven't won a Premier League title, I think, since 2018. Um, and they have gone through a period of rebuilding because they lose players a lot. Portmore thrives on selling players to overseas clubs and so on. So one of the things about Portmore is that year after year, their squad looks different because there are new players in and they lose players and so on. But this, this current team is pretty solid. And um, given their steadiness and the quality of their roster, I wouldn't put it past Portmore to win their eighth Premier League title, which has never been achieved in the history of domestic football in Jamaica. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see. But in the meantime, Lance, let's take a look at Wednesday's fixtures. What do we have coming up for us? All right, so we have Don Beholden versus Montego Bay United, Lime Hall against Harbourview, Malines United will be seeing Tivoli Gardens, Treasure Beach play Waterhouse and Bear United versus Mount Pleasant. So Lance, which is the most mouth watering of the few tomorrow? Well, Montego Bay done beholden for sure because they are two of the three teams that are battling so hard for the sixth and final playoff spot. So the done beholden Montego Bay fixture is a serious fixture. The Waterhouse match is also important because Waterhouse, uh, Don Beholden and Montego Bay United are the three teams that are eyeing that um, sixth and final playoff spot. And a lot hinges on, on these results now going towards the, the end of the regular season. Yes, yeah, so important, especially as we showed our viewers a short while ago, that second, third, fourth spot. It's as if you really can't tell what's going to happen at the end of the season because it's anybody's one for the taken yeah, right now. Yeah, well, the fact is the top five look, you know, reasonably safe at the moment. And it's that sixth place playoff that is that is really up for grabs, that grabs and we'll see because you'll see it there that uh, Tivoli Gardens have 42 points and they are eight clear of uh, sixth place Dun Beholden. And then the gap between Dun Beholden, Waterhouse and Montego Bay United is just it's just three points yeah so that is where the real battle is of course there's a battle at the top as well to see who will finish <laughs> top two yeah um because as i said earlier on cavalier on it and portmore are the teams vying in the second position at the moment not that mount pleasant the leaders are completely safe but they have a four point cushion so you've got to hand them that and uh, make them favorites to make a top two spot yeah and sports facts will have coverage of the malines united versus tivoli gardens fixture uh, that's, of course, tomorrow at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. And we encourage you to tune in and, of course, keep it locked to Sports Max. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 